The next step in the analysis of two quantitative variables is to create a regression model. A regression model is used to take values of the explanatory X variable and make predictions for the response or Y variable. Now, statisticians love linear data. So if we have a scatter plot and we determine that its form is linear and we're using correlation because we would only ever use correlation if the form is linear, then what we could create is what we call a linear regression model. You guys have probably heard this before. It's called the line of best fit, but in statistics class, we called the linear regression model. Here is that linear regression model, y hat equals a plus bx. Now, A is the y-intercept of the linear equation, and B is the slope of the linear equation. X is obviously the explanatory variable that we're going to use to try to make a prediction for the y variable. Now, why do we have that little hat? And yeah, it is called a hat on that y. That is to denote that it's not an actual y value, it's merely a predicted y value. This is exactly what linear regression models do. They take explanatory values and they make a prediction for the response. Here's a specific example of a linear regression model. First, we see the scatter plot looking at the IQs of students and how long it took them to complete that online dissection. And we see our linear regression model, AKA the line of best fit going through the data. Now, first here is the actual specific equation for our linear regression model. Now we see our Y intercept. That is going to be the 93.759. That's our A value. And then we see our slope here, that's our B value of negative 0.0635. X is, of course, the explanatory variable. In this situation, that is their IQ. And Y hat, the predicted time it would take them to complete the dissection. So in this first example here, we see that we wanted to predict how long it would take a student to complete the online dissection with a IQ of 115. So that's exactly what a linear regression model does. It takes that explanatory variable, in this case, 115, we plug it into the equation and out comes the predicted time to complete the online dissection. So for a student that has an IQ of 115, we would predict somewhere around 20.734 minutes for them to complete the online dissection. Now, notice in this next example, I wrote something over top of it called extrapolation. Extrapolation is trying to make predictions for data that's outside of your data range. So here I tried to input 50. And again, nothing was stopping me from plugging in 50. A student could certainly have an IQ of 50 and I could plug 50 in and I got a predicted value about 62 minutes. But why is this called extrapolation and why is this not recommended? Because my data ranged from about IQs, IQ scores of 80 to it looks like an IQ score of possibly around 140 there at that high value. So that means that my linear regression model is only good for making predictions inside of that range. That's actually called interpolation. So trying to make a prediction for IQ scores ranging from 80 to 135 would be very smart and very reliable and, and, and something that I would certainly trust. Trying to make a prediction for an IQ score outside of that range is not trustworthy and that's why it's called extrapolation and it's not recommended. Now, again, notice that there was nothing stopping me from doing it. I plugged 50 in, I got a number, but because 50 was not in the range of my explanatory variables for my data, I would not trust this value. It might not be very trustworthy or a very good estimate. So that's what extrapolation is, trying to make a prediction for something outside of your range. I'll say one more time, you could do it, but it's not recommended. Now, one more thing kids will try to do is they'll try to use their linear regression model to work backwards. They'll take the time to complete an online dissection and they'll try to plug that in for Y hat and they'll try to solve for the IQ score of that student. You can not do that. That is not how this equation was created. This equation was created to do one thing and one thing only, which might seem a little bit different from algebra class, but is only created to take an exploratory variable X and give you a predicted value Y hat. You cannot take an actual amount of time to do the online dissection, that would be an actual Y, not a predicted Y, and plug it in for this spot. That spot right there is reserved only for predicted Ys, not actual Ys. So the equation was created to do that one exact thing. Speaking of how it is created, that's the next step. How do we actually create this linear regression model? Well, to explore that, we have to understand residuals.